So my next step that I'm going to do here is I'm essentially going to take these values, this concentration of A and this concentration of B, and I'm just going to plug this in to my rate law expression because now I have terms that basically describe how far away from this new equilibrium and I have an expression that talks about how things change in terms of time. I'm just going to put those two things together and I'm going to write down my new rate law expression. And so that means then I'm going to have a term that says, well, here's my rate of change of time. That concentration of A, well, I said that that's the concentration of A at the new equilibrium, minus x. And that's going to be equal to my reverse rate constant. And this was my concentration of B, which I'm going to write as the concentration of B at the new equilibrium, plus x. And from that, I'm going to subtract off my forward rate constant and that this was the concentration of A, which I'm now going to write as the concentration of A at the new equilibrium, minus x. So for here, I'm just going to apply my differential on the left-hand side and distribute out terms on the right-hand side. So d by dt applied to the equilibrium of A, well, that's a constant. So really, I just have dx by dt, and I have to carry through the minus sign. And on my right-hand side, I'm just going to have kr times the concentration of B at the new equilibrium plus my reverse rate constant kr times x minus my forward rate constant kf times the concentration of A at the new equilibrium plus my forward rate constant kf times x. And so I can start to group together like terms. I still have my left hand side negative dx by dt. I'm going to have kr concentration of B at the new equilibrium minus kf times the concentration of A at the new equilibrium. And then I'm going to have plus krx plus kfx. And so one thing that we saw previously was that when we had, when we were at equilibrium, and so if I were to write my rate law expression out again, I'd have dA by dt is equal to kr concentration of B, minus kf times the concentration of A. And at equilibrium, then I can say, well, the rate of change of A is going to be 0. I'm going to write kr concentration of B at equilibrium minus kf times the concentration of A at equilibrium. But what this means, then, if I move my minus kf concentration of A at equilibrium to the left-hand side, I get kf times the concentration of A at equilibrium is equal to kr times the concentration of B at equilibrium. What that means, then, is that in this term right here where I've got, say, kf times the concentration of A at equilibrium, I can actually write that as kr times the concentration of B at equilibrium. What that means then is that I now have concentration of B at equilibrium times kr minus kr times the concentration of B at equilibrium. And so uh, those two terms essentially cancel out. I can also, on the other two terms on my right-hand side, I, can, I have a factor of x that I can factor out. And so what I'm going to be left with here is I've got negative dx by dt, and that's going to be equal to x times kr plus kf. And all I'm going to do now is just multiply both sides by minus 1, so that in the end I'm going to get dx by dt is equal to negative x times kr plus kf. Just to reiterate, again, we're trying to figure out how x changes in time, because then that, that'll help tell us how long it takes for us to reestablish our new equilibrium from the old equilibrium. So I'm going to then do my separation of variables. I'm going to divide both sides by x. And I'm going to multiply both sides by dt. And so all I'm doing is just shifting around my x and my dt. So I've got d, dx over x is equal to negative kr plus kf dt. And then at this case, now I'm just going to integrate. My bounds of my integration is simply I start at x0, and I'm going to go to sum x, and that's when I start at t is equal to 0, moving to sum time t. So then on my left-hand side, I have 1 over x as my thing I'm integrating, which then results in natural logarithm of x, applied between x0 and x. And on my right-hand side, I have minus kr plus kf, the integral of dt is just t, evaluated between 0 and t. I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus, natural logarithm of x minus the natural logarithm of x naught, 
and that's equal to minus kr plus kf times t minus zero. I keep moving through, I get the natural logarithm of x over x naught, and that's equal to minus kr plus kf times t. I apply e to the power of, so I take the exponential of both sides, x over x naught is equal to e raised to the power of negative kr plus kf t, and then finally my x, how it changes in time, is basically equal to x naught times e raised to the power of negative kr plus kf t. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we have our rate of our reaction, or our progress of reaction x, and we know that as a function of time. And what this indeed, what this tells us is that if we know x naught, where x naught is just the difference um, in concentration between the old equilibrium and the new equilibrium, then we can actually plot out how these two concentrations, in our case a and b, vary in time. And again, this is an exponential decay is how they both vary in time. So how long it takes for this new equilibrium to be established, that's something that I'm going to quantify by defining a new term. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a term called tau. And in this case, this tau, that's going to be equal to 1 over kr plus kf. And so what that means then in my expression that I have written down in terms of how my x changes with time, and if I rewrite that using this tau, what I get is x is equal to x naught e to the negative t over tau. And so what has this done for us now? Well, what this means is that the tau represents how long it takes for a reaction to progress from x naught to about one-third of what x naught was. And how do I know that? Well, let's do the thought experiment. Let's say, let's let t, like the time, equal to tau. And so what that does here then is I would say, well, x is equal to x naught, e is equal to negative tau over tau, which means that my x is equal to x naught, raised, or e raised to the power of negative one. And e is, if we're gonna approximate to a really simple number, we're gonna round up to the, whole, the, the nearest whole number, then e is roughly equal to three. So what that means is that at that time tau, we basically have a third of x naught, meaning that we've progressed this reaction to about two thirds the, the time to completion. And so that's essentially what, what tau is trying to quantify. And this would be the value that you would quote as to how long it takes for something to reach equilibrium. You would basically give this time constant as that value. And the reason why we say until we get to this point where we only go two thirds of the way to completion and I'll illustrate it using the same plot that I had before. Here's my concentration of B. Here's my concentration of A. Here's when the temperature shift happens at T is equal to zero. And then what we would say is that these concentrations, they move forward and they move towards an asymptote, but it would take a very long time for it to actually hit whatever equilibrium expression or equilibrium value that we say it does. And so whenever we do these calculations using integrated rate law expressions, we set t as t goes to infinity. But of course, we don't have that long to wait. And so instead, we just quote, how long does it take until we get to, basically, it's gone two-thirds of the way to get to, to this value, to this equilibrium value. And so we started at x naught, we're trying to find the value that it gets to x naught over 3, and so then this is then what tau represents, is this time to go between these two values, and I would, could draw the exact same thing down here, where here I've got the value of x naught, I have my value of x naught over 3, and so then my tau is then equal to this time frame, that then tells me or it gives an indication as to how long this, this reaction takes to go back to equilibrium. And so you can imagine that if my rate constants were very, very, very large, then my tau is going to be a very small number, meaning that if the reaction goes very fast in both directions, then I'm going to reestablish equilibrium very quickly. And if my rate constants are very, very, very small, then my tau is going to be then much larger, and it's going to take far longer for these 
for the system to reachieve equilibrium.